Kurtosis and skewness are not useful parameters in statistics. They serve no more than an academic purpose. Or do they? Keep watching to know more. Welcome to another tutorial from Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. I'm Shreesh and on this channel I share with you tips and tutorials just like this one to help you grow faster in your personal and professional life. So if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel and do the needful so that you don't miss out on more such videos. So before we move on, based on communication sent to me by subscribers, I have made some important announcements towards the end of this tutorial. So miss them at your own risk. All right. Lately, quite a few subscribers urged me to do a video on kurtosis and skewness. In statistics, these parameters are sometimes also called the measures of shape. So let's understand skewness and kurtosis. Simply put, skewness is defined as a measure of symmetry or probably the lack of it. The word skewness in English means lopsidedness, tilted or biased. So we try to ascertain whether and how much lopsided or biased is the probability distribution of a real valued random variable about its mean. Kurtosis, on the other hand, until recently was defined as the measure of peakedness of the bell curve or the normally distributed curve. Kurtosis originates from the Greek word kurtos or kurtos which means curved. So why are we obsessed and smitten with shapes and curves? The reason for this is pretty simple. More than the obsession, it is the necessity for normality in the data for statistical analysis. The necessity arose since the statistics experts of the year observed that most of the sociological data like the height of the population, blood pressure of a human being and many educational measures followed a normally distributed pattern. If you're clueless about the term normal distribution, then I have already created separate videos on the topic. You can find them in the channel playlist or links in the description below. Incidentally, many statistical tests have also been built around the assumption of normality in data. These tests also work with approximately normally distributed data or data with minor deviations. So let's quickly summarize what we understand about skewness. For that, let us plot the histogram for the following data with sample size 30. For convenience's sake, when we use a smooth curve for the histogram, we observe that the curve has a rather extended data set on the right hand side. The extended data is called the tail for obvious reason that it resembles a tail of an animal. If the tail extends towards the right, the data is considered positive skewed. Additionally, we observe that mean and median are greater than the mode. Conversely, if the tail extends to the left, the data is negative skewed. Further, mean and median are lesser than the mode. So obviously, anything that is neither positive nor negative is symmetric or skewed zero or undefined. In case of symmetric data or normally distributed data, obviously the mean, median and mode are equal. Therefore, skewness can have a value that is positive, negative, zero or sometimes undefined. In a nutshell, it is suggested that if skewness is more than positive one or less than negative one, we consider the data to be highly skewed. If it is more than negative one or less than negative 0.5, we consider the data to be moderately skewed. Also, when it is more than positive 0.5 or less than positive one, we consider the data to be moderately skewed. And when it is more than negative 0.5 or less than positive 0.5, the data is fairly symmetric. If you find this easy, here is one more data set. And this is the histogram for it. Let us convert this as well into a smooth curve for the sake of visual aesthetics. This is another normally distributed curve that is symmetric around the mean. Now to add a twist to this curve, let us add another data point. We see that due to the additional data point 30, like the mean, skewness also shoots up. So an important question arises. Does it mean that skewness can identify outliers? For that, let us go back to the previous chart without the outlier 30. 
We will use the box plot chart on this data to check for outliers, if any. Notice that though the curve is fairly normally distributed, it still has some outliers that were identified by the box plot rather than the skewness value. Therefore, we can conclude that though skewness gets affected by extreme values, the parameter may not be able to detect outliers all the time. Outliers or extreme values affect skewness primarily because when we calculate skewness, we are effectively calculating the cubed value of the distance of the data points around the mean. That would lead us to then conclude that skewness can only be used for identifying symmetric or normally distributed data. Well, then, when we look at these three charts seen earlier, we could have had concluded about normality and skewness using only the mean, median and mode values alongside the histogram or curve plots. Thus, calculating the skewness figure does not add any greater value except adding a computational effort. Occasionally, one could add a box plot to gain sufficient information on the outliers. Alright, if that is understood, let us now move on to understanding kurtosis. At the beginning of this video, we said that kurtosis was historically considered to be a measure of peakedness. That is, of course, until recently. However, before we move on to the currently held definition of kurtosis, let us quickly understand how it was defined earlier. A flatter peaked curve was called platycurtic, whilst a higher peaked curve was leptocurtic. Platy means broad and lepto means slender. A curve well balanced in the middle section is termed mesocurtic. Obviously, meso means middle or halfway. Here's an interesting way to remember them. Now, way back in 1945, Irving Kaplansky, a mathematician, had proposed a revision in the approach contrary to kurtosis being a measure of peakedness. Later, recently in 2014, Peter H. Westfall finally laid to rest all speculation about the definition of kurtosis as a measure of peakedness. He very vehemently mentioned and proved that kurtosis has nothing to do with peakedness and instead it is more a measure of the combined weight of the data in the tails relative to the overall distribution. Peter H. Westfall is a doctorate in statistics and professor of quantitative sciences at the Texas Tech University. For those who are interested, the links to both these papers are posted in the description below. Today, it has been accepted that kurtosis is indeed a measure of weight of the data in the tails relative to its overall shape. However, certain textbooks continue to maintain the historical erroneous definition of kurtosis. The reason why kurtosis is dependent on the tails is well understood by this equation for kurtosis. In the equation, like skewness, we again see a heavy dependence on the distance of the data points from the mean as well as the high power to which the difference is raised. We have known that mean and standard deviation are affected by extreme values that usually reside in the tails of a distribution. The links to these tutorials are in the description below in which I have explained this effect. Alright, if you have gained some elementary understanding on kurtosis, let us look at the following data. I have regenerated this data from one of the examples in a previous video on normal distribution. This is a normal distribution of sample size 7000 with a mean equal to 100 and standard deviation equal to 10. If we were to draw multiple samples with sample sizes 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 and 750 from this larger set of data, we would get a normal distribution for each of the samples drawn. Here's an illustration for a few of them. All these distributions have almost the same mean, median, mode and standard deviation values. However, when we calculate the kurtosis, we notice that there is a wide variation in the kurtosis value with the change in sample size. Now, this is due to the dependence on the sample size in the equation for kurtosis. Most analytical and statistical packages, including Microsoft Excel, use this equation to calculate kurtosis or rather excess kurtosis. This is considered excess kurtosis since we deduct 3 from the actual kurtosis to see how much the value is above or below 3. 
excess kurtosis negatively below 3 would indicate heavy or fatter tail and excess kurtosis positively above 3 would indicate thinner tails relative to the overall distribution. Excess kurtosis of 0 would therefore indicate a normal distribution. So here we are. We have noted that both kurtosis and skewness are heavily affected by sample size. Both these measures have more to do with the data in the tails rather than the peaks or the bell portion of the curve. We can have a better understanding of the shape of the curve using some basic descriptive statistics like the mean, median, mode and the standard deviation along with plotting the data graphically. From all we discussed so far, it appears that an additional computational effort for kurtosis and skewness can be avoided by leaving them out of the consideration set. Therefore, it appears that studying them seems to be a good idea only from an academic perspective. If that is what we have concluded, then let us look at the following table. The three plots have been generated using the same sample size of 7000 and standardized for Z values. All three distributions have mean equal to 0, standard deviation equal to 1, and skewness equal to 0. However, all three of them have a different value of excess kurtosis. This is the only value that differentiates the three of them. In financial modeling and investment analysis, sometimes there is an over-reliance on the assumption of normal distribution. In such applications, neglecting the concept of kurtosis can result in what is called as the kurtosis risk. Kurtosis risk relates to not being able to identify assets or investments that are either wildly high or wildly low on their returns. Often, they will not be identified using three standard deviations from the mean. These assets tend to perform inconsistently and from stable returns point of view are better avoided. Such risky financial securities or assets can be identified using kurtosis. So whilst in most of the cases we could neglect the computation for kurtosis, there are a few applications where it makes tremendous sense to study this parameter. Comment below if you know of any more uses purely for kurtosis. Alright, regarding the announcements, first a big thank you to all viewers including the subscribers for supporting this channel. I am profoundly grateful to you. For subscribers who had written to me about study guides, there is good news. They are being worked upon and coming soon to you. So watch out for them on the link posted in the description below. For viewers who had requested for coaching on data science or statistics, you can connect with me again through a separate link posted in the description. To get more tutorials on descriptive statistics, click over here. I'll see you in the next one. Stay healthy and stay peaceful.